Alan, it's all yours. Okay, thank, thank you very you much. Us. Yeah, thanks for having me again. Thanks to everybody coming out. Thanks to the staff for putting this all together. I, every year I look forward to this this event. This is this is really great. And this, I've been to all six, so this is like a high school reunion each year to come back. And you know, a lot of the same people, so it makes a lot of fun. And you get to hear the inside rumors and all, all sorts of fun stuff. So. It's cold <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, today's talk is Brasavla Cucolata and its hybrids. And well, let's have fun. You know, I like, I like to have informal talks, so if you have a question or comment, just go ahead and holler it out. That way everybody gets a lot more out of the talk. So, who, who, who's that guy up there? <laughs> Yo, yeah, I got a pointer. I think I do. Well, maybe I do. But anyways, let's move on. Okay, today I'm going to cover a little bit about myself and my breeding goals. Brasavla cucolata, the species. Cucolata's influence in breeding. Cucolata hybrids. And then we're going to take a quick look at Brasavla yaki hybrids. Yaki is cucolata by Nadosa. And I, I was for, lucky enough to get a really good couple cultivars on a remake that I made of this hybrid. We'll take, and I've bred on with it. I've made uh, 12 uh, hybrids using Yaki as a, as a parent. We'll look at some of those. And then finally wrap up, talk about how I grow cucolata and its hybrids. Oh, I'm a hobbyist grower, I'm not commercial. I have a small 12 by 16 greenhouse and I've been growing and breeding orchids for over 20 years. And I have over 70 registered hybrids, so you don't need a gigantic acre sized greenhouse to, to breed and stuff. It's all done in that little 12 by 10 uh, greenhouse. Symbiums? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Bob, I've had a cymbidium in my greenhouse once for about f two hours, maybe probably, probably an hour. I virus test all the bigger plants and divisions, and as it turned out, it was virus, so it was, it was less than that. It was probably like actually like 20 minutes by the time I, I virus tested and saw it had virus, it went to the super can. So that's, that's the extent of my cymbidium growing in the, in the greenhouse, but anyways. This is inside, of course, like any orchid addict, I got way too many orchids for the given <laughs> volume. Somehow I have like a thousand plants in there, but of course half of those are little seedlings, but you know, the other 500 or so. I'm growing orchids in areas of that greenhouse I never ever imagined, and I'm always trying to come up with, uh oh, up here's a space, somehow I'll put something there, so. And then during the warm weather, I moved uh, most of the stuff outside, so that's in the backyard under trees and some shade cloth. Okay. Yeah. Where is that? I'm out of Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, my breeding goals. Entertain and have fun <laughs> and try to produce, you know, interesting, unusual, and beautiful flowers. Being a hobbyist, I got the luxury of not having to worry about whether I can sell them or not. So I can, I can really be like an artist, a jazz player. I can breed, make stuff that you know, commercial people would never want to try to make because they may not be able to sell it because it may not be good. But being a hobbyist, I can take those risks and that's the type of stuff I focus on. Okay, let's look at Brasavla cucolata, the species. It grows in the Caribbean and Central America, and I think down to maybe some of the islands off of Venezuela. Has anybody in here ever seen cucolata grown in the wild? Armando, I'm gonna have to talk to you because that's on my bucket list of things I wanna do in my life yet is to go see cucolata grown in the wild, so. It's a lowland warm grower. Okay, the flowers are spidery shaped, basically with a, uh, white flowers with yellow or red blushes and a long elongated white lip. Now this is 
about, this is 180 degrees opposite type flowers that uh, Jeff talked about. He talked about the big, round, beautiful flowers. These are going to be starry shaped, spidery shaped. So it's, it's kind of the opposite. Yeah. I have seen it growing about 3,000 feet high. 6,000 feet high? 3,000. Oh, 3,000. So it, it can grow up high then. So I was just going by what was said in the books. So you're a guy that saw it for real. You know the real story. So. Okay, like the other Brasovelas, it's evening fragrant. And the interesting thing is it, it can be a sequential bloomer where it will put out a flower or two, and then they'll fade, then it'll put out another flower. And the other interesting thing is it can rebloom from old growth from like last year, which is like, you know, most Cattleya orchids won't do that. Once they bloom on a growth, that's it. So that's, that's kind of a neat characteristic. Okay, Brasavla cuculata is not as easy or a vigorous grower as the more commonly known Brasavla nodosa. Most people can grow nodosa. You can grow them under lights, outside, under, in direct sun. They're very tolerant. But cuculata, for most people, yeah, they have more trouble. It's more difficult to grow than nodosa. Okay, let's look at some. This is a typical... Uh, Cuculata, the species, spidery shape. I like the long, elongated lip. It's very exotic looking. The, the, how big is it? The flowers? Eight and a half inches. <laughs> 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 is, that, is, is that width or height? <laughs> In Texas, they grow eight inches wide. <laughs> And I do have a picture of a Texas, I do have a picture of a Texas uh, type cuculata. You know, we'll, we'll look at that in a little. Oh, it's a 13. <laughs> so you got the, this exotic spidery shape, and they're you know white or cream. They got some green. Lot sometimes they'll open open up. They'll have purple, rose blushes. You can kind of see on on the. Petals and sepals. It's an eight inch pot, right? Eight inch pot, yeah. <laughs> there you can see some variations in the color. So the flowers can vary in size and coloration and in, in shape. The lip uh, shapes can vary somewhat. So they're not completely uniform. Alan, have you ever found an albino? An albino? Yeah. No. Uh -uh. So you're not aware of an albino one? I haven't. There may be some, but I haven't seen or don't know of any. Here's one you can see as, as much as a small one. Back to the question, how large, how big are they? It's not uncommon. You can get flowers, you know, this tall. And then here's the Texas style yeah. cupola. <laughs> Do you have any of these in your club? <laughs> Do you notice for breeding with Texas style cuculata, you need a hockey stick? <laughs> That's what I use for Texas style, but. That's okay. On the, that's the pollen. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm getting ready to pollinate that flower. The See those two yellow things? That's they call pollinia. That's the pollen. And we'll <laughs> so, but anyways, okay. Oh, for the 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 people who are real gullible. This isn't for real, so you don't need to. <laughs> but you might be able to find it on eBay. <laughs> Okay, here's an interesting, this is from Orchids, Orchids Plus, uh, JC, this was awarded back in 1982, look how red it is. And there's, there's been another one that was awarded like in the early 1992, it was a red one. That was grown by uh, John Dunkelberger, some of you may know, he, he's a uh, AOS judge grower up in Pennsylvania. And I talked to him and I asked him about, you know, did it bloom out every time, Red? He said, no. The time he took it in, 
it had been exposed to like 40 degree temperatures. So maybe getting the red color to come through is, is an environmental thing. I'm not aware of any, there's cultivars out there like uh, Nora's red and red something or other. And I'm not really sure if they always bloom red or whether they just maybe bloom with a blush or maybe only one time they have the red. But anyways, it's, it's an interesting thing. That'd be great now for breeding for hybrids if I could get something like that with red now, you know, people will go crazy over that because that's really different. Oh, wow. This came off of Facebook. This was a, a photo in the grower. It was from Ed Leitner. I don't, does anybody know him? I'm not, oh, he's from California, but he just posted it. So you can see, you can grow them into a, a nice specimen plant. And I bet that thing smells really nice early evening. 10 years? Well, that's, he's doing an excellent job. <laughs> okay, Rasavla Kukulata, St. Mary of Egypt, CCM, AOS, AM also. This is from Orchids Plus. It, it got awarded back in 2001, uh, Michigan State University. And check this out. 70 flowers, three buds on 18 inflorescences. Some had uh, inflorescences had five and six flowers. That's crazy great. Normally you may have two flowers. A lot of times you'll just have one flower on inf inflorescent, but it may you know, be a sequential bloomer. I was able to get a division of this back in the early 2000, early 1990s, like I always do, get divisions, I virus tested it, it was virus. So I got too many plants, I, I can't isolate vi uh, virus plants, so uh, I pitched it, didn't keep it. But recently I decided, I, this is so outstanding, I thought, well, maybe I can figure out some place to isolate it and do a selfing and try to get it. And what I found out was their mother plant has really gone downhill, so probably the, the virus is finally really kicking in over the years, or maybe poor culture, whatever. But, but this is probably the most outstanding cuculata as far as flower count that I've ever seen. So there may be better, but you know, I've never seen it. So, okay, let's talk about cuculata's influence in breeding. It produces interesting star or spidery shaped flowers. You're not gonna get the full round flowers like you do with uh, the more traditional breeding that you see out in the marketplace. It produces the uh, elongated or exaggerated lip, which is one of the, the characteristics that I really like a lot. It can produce sequential flowering hybrids. It, it can be, the hybrid may be just the growth habit or whatever might be more like cuculata. It'll throw out a flower or two, and then after they fade, it may throw out another one. So that's kind of an interesting characteristic. Or you have a, a growth that has bloomed, and then next year comes, and it throws out another you know, flower or two. So it can re-bloom from a previously flowered growth. The hybrids can be uh, evening fragrant, not always, but can be. Okay, let's move on to the hybrids. This is where it gets into the interesting stuff. Brasava, Brasavala Yaki. Okay, the way the, this is set up is on the left is the hybrid and on, over, over on the right hand side show the parents. My uh, Nadosa talk, I have this same slide, but really Yaki favors the uh, Kukulata shape as you can see. And this is Black's best. This is the best of the remake of Yaki that I did over 20 years ago. Uh, the, why it's the best is the purple blushes on it is, is the strongest out of all the ones that I bloomed out. Uh, I've been breeding a lot with this. And then there, I got one awarded, which is called Black's Nova, got an HCC. And you can see it has a good flower count. There's like four flowers on, on a spike. So, you know, the cuculata hasn't held back the flower count on this one. 
I get requests up from all over the world for Black's Best all the time, but you know, <laughs> uh, I'm, I don't want to chop it up to where I compromise the plant so much. So it's, uh, if I ever have divisions, you know, I usually put them up on eBay. If I have plants to sell, I put them on eBay or bring them to the talks. What's your eBay name, username? A Black Orchid. Oh, those are your names. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, Brasavla George Tyler. Uh, I remade the Yaki. This is one of my hybrids that I registered. And let's look at the, the parents. Here I'm using Brasavla flagellaris. Nice, you got the, the, the elongated lip, but you're kind of fattening the lip up. This is evening fragrant. Uh, this is the very first one that was ever awarded, Layla Black HCC. There's been two other awarded since then. Peter T. Lynn, one of our speakers, he got an AM on, on a George Tyler. And for, George Tyler is a, a good friend from back in Virginia, orchid grower and stuff, so I named this in honor of him. And here's another one. This one turned out pretty nice. The lip is you know, a little bit narrower, but you got the, the, the pinkish or the burgundy blushing, the rose blushing on, on the, uh, the sepals. David Sanders, Brasavla digbiana by Cucolata. Uh This is an awarded one, Carrie. There's the parents, of course. The digbiana has been split out into a new genus, Rycholelia, which as far as the people splitting up the, the, the orchid genuses, this is one that probably makes a little bit more sense, so, but this is <laughs> David Sanders quite variable this is really nice because the petals and sepals are are fairly flat and uh, you can get f flowers that aren't nearly as well and then you get, I've had plants of uh, David Sanders that have been miserable growers for some reason so you have a wide range if you want to get one of these hybrids. I was just over at John Odom's greenhouse and he has some beautiful looking plants over there. So if you want to pick one of these up, that'd be a good place to go. How's that for a commercial? <laughs> now they look really healthy because I'm thinking, man, I had like three plants of David Sanders and they look terrible for the two years that I had them. Yours look really great, so. I haven't had my two years yet. Oh, no, but you're... <laughs> Yours look a lot better than mine ever did, so. But this particular cultivar is, is a good grower. Did, did, you, did you make this? No, no, I got this. This is a division, or, yeah, a division that I got from somebody. I don't even remember who. Interesting with David Sanders. Look at the back of the uh, sepals, the purple or rose blush. And you can kind of see it in this one, some of the blushing. So there is color that comes through from both. The Cucolata has some purple pigmentation in it, as you know, we, we looked at the earlier ones. And of course, Digbiana, a lot of times you can see the, the, the purple rose color in the flowers. Crazy Arachno, Perennii by Cucolata. There's the parents. This plant, if you were at Redland this year, I think, uh, Plantio de Orcadias had like 30 divisions of this and by what, what was it John, 11 minutes after, 11 minutes. after the gates opened, they were sold out all. <laughs> so, got a nice big kind of elongated heart shaped lip, it's a nice thing and here you can see the display can put on, you know, uh, you know, you can have flower counts up to, you know, three or more. So it's a nice hybrid. Brasso ep epidendrum, uh, joy black. This is the, the, the second hybrid that I ever made and registered, named in honor of my wife, made with uh, Encyclia marii. Who all in here has killed Encyclia marii? Oh, great, man, I don't feel bad now. I've killed three or four of them. I basically, it's one of those plants that 
I'll get it if it's in bud and scavenge the pollen out of it, knowing that I probably won't be able to keep it alive. So it's, I think it's supposedly supposed to be a cooler grower, I'm not sure, but yeah, a lot of people have problems with it, but really nice flower, star-shaped, you know, the white lip. Here's some other ones, from, uh, siblings from the same seed pod. This, this one on the left has a little bit fatter lip and a little bit paler, so. It, what's that? Yeah, I made this hybrid, huh? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it grows better. I've been able to keep, I've been able to keep some plants alive, but it, it's, it's a, it's a hesitant grower, but it, it's better than, it got some, it got some hybrid vigor, but it's, it's not a tremendous grower. And it, it blooms once a year for me in the spring, so, but I've been able to keep, keep plants alive for multiple years, so. Okay, Juanita Coleman made with uh, L.C. Madame Duberry. <coughs> this, as far as flowers, as far as all my breeding goes, this is my favorite flower. I just think it's really different, really unique. The presentation and the color and the lip, I just love it. Okay, here's another question. Who in here has killed Catlia Valutina? <laughs> yeah, lots of hands. I saw Peter has some Valutina plants in buds and I thought man I could buy that plant get the you know when a flower steal the pollen and then I'll probably kill it but I'll have the pollen but that it, Valutina is a parent of the uh, Madame Duberry and that difficulty in keeping them alive got passed on to that parent and it also got passed to the next generation of Juanita Coleman and in addition it got the characteristic of being a, a bug magnet. You know, some orchids you have in your collection just draw scale or mealybugs. So most of the plants in this cross had those two strikes against it. This particular plant with this, this is the best flower that I've seen from the cross. Uh, it was a warm January day. It had scale or something. So take it outside, you know, spray it with horticultural fine oil kill well the next morning when I go out after it was in the mid 20s the plant's still setting outside that that will kill the scale in the mealy bugs <laughs> but but the plant didn't the, the patient died so but if there some of these the siblings I traded to a commercial greenhouse. There may be some of these alive out there, but maybe not. I've been looking for, if anybody knows, if they have uh, Madame Duberry, let me know, because I'd love to try to remake this cross, because I just think it's really, uh, like I said, it's my, the favorite flower of all the ones I've, I've made. And here's another one. This is a sibling. It's not nearly as impressive, but you know, it's still kind of that same type of thing. Crazy Yellosa. This is one of my hybrids. And there's the parents. This is made with Catlia granulosa. And then the, actually one of the uh, plants from my cross got awarded by Linda Thorne. This is Linda Thorne's plant and photo. She got a, a HCC and the cultivar name is Key Barbara No Pie. I, and I, I need to talk to Linda about where that cultivar name came from but anyways it's you know it's an interesting spidery thing like the lip on it. Pug Charisma here I'm starting to try to get more color into the uh, the hybrids this one turned out fairly nice and then from the same seed capsule we got this this particular so that's what's really neat about doing your own hybridizing and your own lab work and growing the plants out is you get to see the variation between the the children of the hybrids okay and then i did this crazy cross otis tyler i took the uh epidendrum criniferum and crossed it to cucolata now this is the type of thing where a hobbyist can do this a commercial grower would never ever try to use that as a parent the, the sepals are about two, two, 
too uh, lead pencil with, but you know, I'm not afraid to use it. I like, you know, I'm trying to get weird stuff, different stuff, so. The, you can see the variation in the, in the kids. You gotta be careful moving these around. You, you got a spear-like tip to the lip, you see that there? Moonwalk magic. That's uh, crossed on everything nice. You got an elongated lip. It's, you know, it's different than, than the everything nice, but it, 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 you know, it's, it's close to, close to. Uh, no strong yellows, uh-uh. Uh, well, <laughs> people who get plants from me are blooming them out a lot quicker than I, than me. I've been in a downward, downward cultural spiral for about five years. I've gone through a series of experiment, bad experimentation, bad choices, and bad luck. So, uh, like I was in, uh, like I was remounting orchids, and I look at the tag, and it says, "Man, I made this cross five years ago. The plant is still the same size that it was uh, a year after I made it. Uh, you know, rotting roots off and changing cult or culture. Or, but anyways, back to you. It's taken me a lot longer to bloom stuff out. So a lot of these is like five years." Uh, is a ballpark, but there's been several hybrids that people have bloomed out uh, years, couple years, three years in advance, and there's some that I've never even bloomed out that other people have bloomed out and sent me pictures and stuff. So I'm trying to improve my culture because you know I realize I need to get better and you know quit the experimentation and go with stuff that I know will work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, what happened was. I, I, to quickly summarize, I tried to grow Catley Alliance stuff, like this is like five years plus, in diatomite, the diatomaceous rock. Well, that didn't work out. So I, I took all the big Catlia stuff out, put them in pots with bark. Well, the bad choice was the bark that I used was right on the verge of breaking down. So, you know, I rotted roots off. I'm in a chronic overwater, in, 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 so that's a bad combination. Okay, then, you know, with the Brasabola stuff, realize, hey, this stuff does so much better mounted or in wooden baskets. So I, I started mounting everything, but I said, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a better mount. So I started using, trying to use exotic woods like uh, locust, uh, Osage orange, northern pine, uh, some exotic woods I had left over from guitar building. Well, what I found out was when the new roots would get, go out and touch the media, it would, you could tell it's like, oh. So all the wood choices that I, I selected were bad. The orchids didn't like them. Actually, when I, I cut them off to remount them on cork, which is what I'm doing now, they would just literally fall off. Like you mount an orchid on cork or a wooden basket, it stays on there and you got to you know, tear your damaged roots. These were just falling off. But, so that's why, back to your question, it's taken me a lot longer then it should be blooming things out. Yeah. Uh, something like this, the Moonwalk Magic, does that still have a nitrogen? I don't recall whether it does or not. Does that usually carry over the nitrogen? Maybe like half the time or less. Okay, Brassocaria contentment. This is a crazy cross using Barcaria lindleyana. There's only six <clears throat> Brassocaria hybrids. This is the only one that uses cuculata. All the other ones were made with Brasovla and Nodosa. But it's a cute little thing. These are very susceptible to rot, uh, root rot, so that you need to grow them mounted or even just hanging in air with no media. And I'm trying to relearn how to grow the Barcarias because I want to remake a bunch of the Brassocarias. Now, with the brasso carries back to your question on how, how long it, does it take from uh, <clears throat> pollination to flowering, these were, for me, were flowering with around two years, which is really quick. So, 
But then again, I killed most of them to root rot and overwatering. And the Brassocaria flower counts uh, on this one, I think it was fairly low. It was like maybe two or three. Not, I don't even think three because I ended up killing them so fast with overwater. I tried to grow them initially in, in pots with bark and then my overwatering habit, you know, that, that doesn't work. So. The brassocarias, how large? The plants stay very short in stature. What about the blooms? The blooms, this particular one I think was probably like, two yeah, two inches at the most. So, so it didn't increase the size of the flower from the bark area? Uh, yeah, it did. Well, the ones I had were fairly, fairly small with bark areas, so, but Anybody out there has barcarias uh, uh, and the doses in there in bloom, go ahead and try some crazy crosses because they're really neat things. Well, like I said, I'm trying to remake the brassocaries that I had before, and then I'll restrain myself from potting and overwatering and stuff like that. Okay, automagically. Okay, this is uh, Otara Ernest Sombach. Ernest Sombach is a Cattleya chocolate drop hybrid. And I'm at, this is the first bloom, first plant, so I'm kind of excited to see what it does once the plant gets some uh, maturity. And uh, I kind of like the, uh, you know, the color and the shape and stuff. So automagically came from one of the guys at work. We were talking about something technically. And I said, well, how does that work? He said, it just automagically happens. <laughs> so, I thought, man, that's a cool word. So I'm going to, I used it here. So Debbie Sauer by Cucolata. I haven't uh, registered this. So you can see that uh, the color came from the Debbie Sauer and the shape got influenced by the Cucolata. So uh, this is a, a first bloom plant. So I'm excited to, you know, once those get some size. What yeah. is Debbie Sauer? Debbie Sauer is Brasovla nodosa by Lelia Rubin. Yeah. And Rubin is Purpurata by Sincarana. Okay. Sunset Surprise. This is a plant that I had. I didn't make this cross. Interesting uh, flowers. The shape on these aren't that good. I've seen some pictures on the internet of some that were had better presentation, flatter, were really striking. So, talk about the internet. I avoided Facebook for years and years and years. And then like a year and a half ago, I, I broke down, joined Facebook because the orchid forums on the internet had kind of slowed down. There wasn't much interesting stuff. I kept on hearing people about, man, you ought to get on Facebook. There's all sorts of good orchid stuff. So I joined up, got addicted, and it's really great. I recommend if, if you're like old school, like I, I am, and you avoided Facebook, you really ought to go ahead and sign up because you can get really see what people are blooming out. And then like for the uh, this, the South American orchid growers, the Cattleyas, like the Ludomanianas and Mossiers, the stuff that's coming out, blooming down there, just, you know, beautiful, beautiful. It's like, you know, here you see uh, Ludomaniana uh, Arthur Chadwick, which is, you know, out in the marketplace a lot. The stuff that they're blooming out in South America, you would probably throw Arthur Chadwick in the trash can. <laughs> no, really, so that's a benefit of it, it, and uh, yeah, but I don't own stock in Facebook. That was just my experience. I, I really love going and seeing the, and uh, you know, you get to see what what the latest stuff is out there. So that's a just a little side side track. Crown, uh, Crown Fox Telestar. It's a nice thing. Uh, one of the parents is Toshi Aoki. That's used a lot. So in this case, you got you know a fairly nice flower. Only Cuckoo by, it's a, crossed onto a coney. Now, 
This picture doesn't do the flower justice. The overtones and undertones of the colors was just wonderful. Uh, I lost the plant eventually due to my overwatering. And I finally got a coney and I said, I'm going to remake that. That's, that's such a good, you know, interesting hybrid. Uh, I got the cross to take, I got seedlings, but for some reason the seedlings are miserable growers. So I've lost most of them. Yeah, Steve? Does it matter which is the pod parent and which is the pod parent? Which is the pod parent and yeah. does it matter? Normally what I do is since I, I can't really grow super vigorous cuculatas, I always pretty much use that as the uh, pollen parent. Although I've started using it as this, the uh, pod, no, cuculata as the pollen parent, and although now I'm starting to use cuculata as the, the pod parent, but usually what I try to do is I use the most healthy, vigorous plant as the mother plant. Because what I've seen is you use a, a plant that's not real healthy and you put a pod on it, you, there's a chance you're gonna lose it. I lose enough to overwatering and bad choices and stuff. <laughs> How about this, fridge benefit? I love that lip. Now, I forget, I, I either got that from Hawaii or here in Florida. I don't, it's probably Hawaii, but it hasn't been registered. I don't know, I don't know who made it, but it, that, that particular plant was really neat, really nice. You know what fridge benefits is? I looked that up. I think it was a Digbiana by something. Paradise. Ports of Paradise, yeah. Yep, that's. So your golf green crop might look a little bit like this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that golf green cross, man, that, that sounds like that's going to be a really neat thing. Yeah. Beth uh, Lamb did that cross, so. As soon as I, she mentioned about it last year, I, bu I kept on bugging her throughout the year of a hay of those ready. <laughs> okay, let's look at some uh, Brasavla Cucolata hybrids from Florida's own Jamie Lawson. I was hoping Jamie would come. Between Jamie and myself, we, we account for about a third of all the registered Cucolata hybrids, and Jamie's doing a lot of uh, really great Cucolata hybrids. This is a plant that I got from him, Michael Ostifer. I think he's a Florida guy. He's on Facebook. Oh, okay, so he's local. So this is one that I bloomed out from ja uh, Jamie's hybrids. This is another Jamie, uh, Flyboy Jimmy Lawson. And this one actually, it does, the blue, it kind of has a cerulea type blush to it. You know, really nice shape. You know, it's a pleasant shape, nice, nice flower. Fairly good size. It's, you know, what, three and a half inches? Okay, Helen Wagner, another local lady, right? And these, this is, I got these pictures off of Facebook. So this one's, this picture is from Helen Wagner herself. And this one is Jamie Lawson. So this is like I was mentioning about on Facebook, you can see some great stuff. So yeah. Oh, the title, okay. And that's a yellow, right? Bright green, okay. But I think these are really great. I love the lips and the, the, the star-shaped flowers. Okay, BC Mother Lawson. This one I got off of Facebook too. This is, uh, the grower was Joyce Kim Ingalls. Photos by Mark Duttweiler and of course Jamie Lawson. Oh, is that you? Uh, okay. So that's your plant? Okay. Oh, okay. Beautiful thing. Well, that's, that's great to hear you. You're trying to breed on with it, so. Okay. Let's talk about some Brasabla Yaki hybrids. Of course, go back, remember, it's Kukulata by Nadosa, Black's Best, that's the one I get requests all the time for. Let's see, I think I've, I've registered 12 hybrids using Yaki as a parent. 
This is probably the best one. This one I got a HCC on. This was a nice large flower, you know, striking color combination and that, that big wide uh, white lip. Uh, it got awarded at uh, our orchid show probably like, I don't know, four years ago, five years ago. And that flower really caught the eye of, of the visitors. You know, they'd be walking around and say, wow, look at that thing. So the, the wow factor on that was, was good. Okay, best pug ever. This is a crazy cross I used in Cyclia prismacarpa. And here are, are two examples of the, the variety that came out of the seed capsule. Tended to be small flowers, and, but we didn't have the, the tremendous flower count that the uh, Encyclia parent normally has, but still an interesting hybrid. Brasavala yac, uh, yacatlaris. <coughs> here I'm crossing it back to Brasavala flagellaris kind of flat, uh, fattened up the lip some, spidery shape. What I'm trying to do now, more now with the, the Brasavala hybrids is I'm trying to get color into them. Because what you see is if you cross a lot of the, the, the species with each, each other, they're gonna basically be cream, white, greenish color, with some maybe some purple blushing, but you know, not always. But you know, I like to start using some more complicated or more uh, complex hybrids with color to try to get into these things. Robert Worley, this is crossed on the Cattleya maxima. This is named named after uh, a Richmond Orchid Alliance president. He had uh, <coughs> Lou Gehrig's disease. He he passed away a couple years ago. I was able to name this for him and give him the first bloom plant. So he was, he was ecstatic, he was proud. So I was glad to be able to do that for him. Here's a, one I'm really excited about. This is the first bloom, first plant, relaxation. I really love the colors and stuff. I'm, I'm anxious to get that plant grown up to maturity to see what it can do. Here I, on this one, I used the yellow uh, splash colored uh, Fordyce Fantasy. Robert Dots, and this is named in honor of my uncle. The color is off on this. It, it, this I used a, a BC, a BLC Murray Spencer Armroy's Dark Star FCC. If you've seen that thing, that's a deep, deep burgundy purple, really super strong color. That color gets passed on onto the uh, progeny but the, the, the color's off. It's a much more vivid, strong purple color. So I'm real happy about that. I was able to name this just in advance of my uncle dying. So he was, so be cautious if I name an orchid after you. <laughs> <laughs> there seems to be some, some connection. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't know the ploidy of them. I suspect that's probably a tetraploid. Of course, that's a diploid. And that's why you got such a more, much more color in, in a flower that looks more like this. Yeah, I, I've done a couple of crosses with the Murray Spencer, and it, it, that color comes through on the, the progeny. So it. You need to, to use tetraploid. <coughs> Oh, uh, okay. You yeah, see, well, I, I'm, I'm kind of the jazz player artist where I don't really worry about ploidia. I just say, I like this flower and I like this flower. I'm going to cross it. I'm going to see what happens. I don't, I don't overanalyze some people. You were talking about trying to get color in, in there, and that's, that's why I made the color. Oh, okay. Use the tetraploid and lots of color. You may very likely get more color. Okay. All right. Okay, BL Yaka Laba, or Bata. It's Yaki by Lelia Lobata. This is one that I haven't bloomed out, but Ed Merkel in Nashville, this is his photo, one of his plants that he got. He, actually, he got, must have got several from me. This was on the internet. I like it. I love it. I hope I can bloom some plants out. 
And then he bloomed out. Oh, there's the parents. Lelia Lobata. Francisco, does Lobata grow near Rio? In Rio. Yeah. In Rio, so probably all the crazy people there from the Olympics are up there stripping them out or something. <laughs> Oh, vertical wall. Yeah, I thought they were like they grow on cliffs or something. Or, yeah, so. Oh, okay, so. There had to be a drug crazed person to. Okay. What's that? That narrows it to somewhere east of Germany. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, and here's the other one that Ed bloomed out. So thanks, thanks to Ed Merkel for the photos and bloom them out for me. Okay, another one, Becky Tupper, Yaki by Catlia Hardiana. So this is another one that somebody else bloomed. I haven't bloomed any of these out. Becky bloomed hers out like three years ago. So that goes to show you how terrible I've been the last few years. Nice flower spotting. It was a uh, Alba white. Semi Alba. Semi Alba, yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Semi Alba Hardy Anna on this one. Oh, well, this this I really, yeah, this isn't the, the actual one that I used. So, okay, and one of the more recent uh, hybrids, Otara. I, I don't think there's any Otaras anymore, but that's I'm old school. Gaki by Ernest Sombach. If you remember, Ernest Sombach is a Catlia chocolate drop hybrid. These are the first two plants to bloom out, so I'm real pleased with the way they turned out. Okay, let's talk about culture. You may not want to listen to this. You, you hear about how I'm killing. Maybe, maybe if you do the opposite, you'll, you'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, John, I've, been, I've run out of talks to do, but I think I just, well, I'll come back. I do it like every two years. I'll come back and I'll, I'll do a talk on how to kill your Catley Alliance plant. <laughs> <laughs> We're experts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I grow mine intermediate to hot temperatures, bright to full sun. I'm growing, what I've found out for me now in Florida, it may be a different situation. I, they seem to do better on, uh, on uh, cork chunks mounted on cork or in a wooden basket with some large cork added. You, they, you can mount them on, I, I think some people had great success on uh, cypress down here. Okay. Uh, if I grow them in Plastic pots with bark, uh, you know, I overwater and kill the roots, kill the plants. So you have the best results with mounted? Yeah, for me, I do, yeah. On cork. Uh, I do have one that's doing amazingly well. It's growing in uh, a clay pot with diatomite rocks in it. So I'm not sure why I left it in there because, you know, I had bad success with grown Catley Alliance with the, but it's, it, it's growing fine and blooming, so I'll leave it there and see what happens. Okay, avoid overwatering to prevent root rot. <laughs> I need to print that out and put it on the greenhouse door. That's a good generic one. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, that, well, that's, <laughs> and the, the brassavolas in general seem to like the be mounted that they do better plus you don't you don't have re uh, repotting shock you can just let them grow and if they grow off put another piece of whatever there just keep on going okay it's commercial time <laughs> catlia symposiums friday night auction there's an auction tonight if you don't know about okay up for auction Blooming size, original division of Rosavla Yaki Black's Best. And this is the one that gets all the, I get all the requests. And I tested the mother plant in June using Agnia. It's clean as far as for the, the two viruses, the most common. Also, I remade 
yaki. So there's a seedling of yaki on bloom growing in a wooden truck. If, <laughs> let me, if, if you're going to buy the, uh, the, to uh, bid on this, you may want to check out the truck. The truck is starting to show the wear from exposure. But if, you know, you could buy it and keep the truck and sell the, the seedling if you want, whatever. But anyways, that's going to be available. And then finally, a blooming size on bloom seedling of Otara Crazy World. And those are the two, the first two. Crazy World. I use that hybrid name because of kind of the current world we live in now, the, you know, so that's where that came from. But anyways, okay, that's it. Any questions, comments? <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. With the cucoladas, I don't. I can't remember. I I I did. I can't. I don't know if it was a cucolata hybrid or one of my Nadosa hybrids. But it was fragrant both night and day, which was really nice. And I, but I don't remember what it was. But normally not day fragrant. It'll be more likely be evening fragrant. Yeah. And this is maybe a silly question. But what is the difference between Rosalva Ligiana and Rinkolelia Ligiana? They're the same. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same. The, the taxonomists are going crazy, changing, tr tr changing genus names and stuff. No, it's, it's uh, yeah, that's, and like I said, that, that, that's out of all the changes. They're seeing, see, because the, the, the plant habit, I'm not a taxonomist. I, I, may, I may be complete. It was made 50 years ago. Yeah, well, they're just. In, that's an old change. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not a taxonomist, but, but just looking at the plants and how they grow and stuff, that one I'd say, well, yeah, okay. That, as opposed to moving sophronitis and lalias and everything into catlia, you know, that. They didn't move all the way. Well. They only moved the Brazilian. The, well, the Brazilian. <laughs> the Mexican lalias are true lalias. Okay, the ANSEP types. So, okay, yeah. Uh -huh. How do you get to see uh, the, all, you know, a relatively large number of your seedling groups so that you can judge your uh, success rate on that? Okay. <coughs> okay, what I do is I normally try to save at least eight seedlings because I can't save a, more, you know, a whole lot more than that because eventually I'm already full. Like coming to the floor, I've gone crazy buying stuff. So... I'll, when I have to move everything back in, I'll figure out how to get it all to fit back in. But I normally try to save at least eight plants and try to bloom those out. If it's a cross that I'm really excited about, I'll save more. And then some crosses, I may not even get that many. I may not even get eight seedlings. So it's all across the board, but I usually try to keep at least eight. That way I can kill half of them and still maybe have them. <laughs> yeah, way in the back. Oh, Ken Griffith, yeah. If you went to the greenhouse, there'd be a, a, a dump truck load of expanded shale sitting in the parking lot. And you'd say, Ken, what is that? He said, well, that's what I'm growing in now. And so I bought cabinets from him in the early 1980s in a pot of rock, expanded shale. And the medium mix lasted for 20 years because it was, it was rock that had never rotted. It was wonderful. So you come back the next year, and you find the pile of something else. <laughs> oh, he did. so he changed up a lot, experimented a lot. Hey, that's <laughs> <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,
Well, <laughs> well, unfortunately, they live, they outlive the, uh, the flower. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm open. To, I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> uh, you you can get uh, orchid hybrids. You could name it whatever you want. You get all the seedlings. Uh, I think it costs like fifteen hundred dollars. Chadwick's will do that. Oh, oh, oh. What, 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 who was this? Yeah, he wanted you to kill somebody. Oh, <laughs> oh okay, okay. I, won't completely, uh, <laughs> I didn't pick okay. Now I see what you <laughs> Okay, well, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.